Greetings and salutations to you all my good chums. My name is Richard, this is Gentleman of Gaming and welcome back to Grand Strategy Sunday and Crusader Kings 2 in real life. Last time on this show, as you can see in the top right corner there, the Abbasid Revolt League Independence War has entered. Caliph Suleiman II has lost. And my word was it a big loss. If we take a look at the Abbasid Empire now, quote unquote, empire, compared to the amount of land that they have lost, they have lost the entirety of their African holdings. They have lost pretty much all of the Levant and huge chunks of Anatolia as well. And if we take a look at the Caliph now, he is a pitiful, pitiful man with just under 7,000 troops. He is completely bankrupt. And if we look at the next door neighbors, the Seljuks who we needed the Abbasids to protect us from, the Caliph of them, the Shah and Shah, he's calling himself the Shah and Shah, but he only has just under 5,000 troops and 294 gold. Whereas if you look at us, who grew massively last week for due to the Caliph giving us a huge amount of land, I bet he regrets that now. If you take a look at us, we are bringing almost 5,000 troops to the table as well and nearly 2,000 gold. We can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Seljuks. We can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Abbasid Emperor, the Caliph now. However, next door we cannot go toe-to-toe -to -toe with this people. But it's okay because this man, the Sultan, Sultan Akhlib of the Mahalibid Sultanate, is our nephew. He is a member of our family. He is our nephew. Hopefully... That means that he will like us. We actually like him. Perhaps we should send him a little congratulatory gift to make him like us that bit more. I'm pretty sure if we check his treasury as well, he has our silver bracelets. Emir Mustafa the Wise, who created these silver bracelets and had them stolen by the bastard down here in the... What was it? I cannot remember. It's Ethiopia, but the uh, the 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 former ruler there who was taken over by our it was his father, but he was his father was married to one of our family members, and now our nephew is back in control of them. So we don't have a lot to fear from them, but what we do have to fear is the Mongol Empire. The Mongols are still out there. They are still coming this way. I was hoping that the Seljuks and then the Abbasids would be a good little buffer for us. Help grind them down a little bit before they reached our little lands. But with the downfall of the Abbasids and the, I think what's happened with the Seljuks is he's lost all of his event spawned troops. I'm pretty sure he has a large amount of events spawned as soon as the Seljuks come, which is what allowed them to make all of these gains. I think that he's lost all of those troops now, which means that he is now quite weak. And that does mean that the Mongols, who still have over 56,000 troops and are coming this way, could be a problem. He actually does like us though. So, you never know. Maybe, maybe we might be all right. But, yeah, as I said, we got our land grown hugely. We got given pretty much the entire east coast, uh, west coast of the Arabian Peninsula. We now own the holy cities of Mecca and Medina as well. They are in our realm. This bastard here, this vassal, tried to have us murdered. So he is now in our prison as well. His family is not very important, so he does not get house arrest. He gets thrown straight into the dungeons. But that is where we are. We also got our city built. We finally got our city built. And I figured out how to rename it 
I think the problem with the city down here is that I gave the city away before I renamed it first of all. So that's something that we might need to look at in the future. Hopefully we can get this title back and then change the name and then give it back out to someone else again. But that is where we find ourselves right now, ladies and gentlemen. Apparently there are epidemics on the field. There is a smallpox outbreak going on to the north of us right now. There is consumption in our realm, but I don't know about that stuff. I'm not I'm not a renowned physician. I don't know about that. My dad wasn't a renowned physician. He didn't teach me all about that. I don't know what's going on with that. So our gates remain open for the time being. But what's going to happen this week? I generally don't know. We don't have any plans right now, but we are considering perhaps having the aim of becoming the king of Arabia. We're pretty close to the title now because of the amount of land that we were given last time we are now in control of 44 percent of the land of arabia we only need 51 percent so there is a chance that we might be able to do it there are a few places that we can take but not many so we've got this area in here which is possibility and i think that is about it. The rest of this is all Iraq, isn't it? Yep. And then we're going into my nephew's territory, which we don't really want to do. There's this little area here as well that we could take. I don't know whether you're part of the Abbasids or not anymore, are you? You are still part of the Abbasids, so we wouldn't pee off too many people by doing that. But I don't know if we can declare wars. I'm not sure if we can declare wars on 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 uh, in our realm or not now because i think that um yeah the the caliph took that away from us you also want to become king of arabia i don't see that happening my good man good luck with that but i don't think that that's going to happen i think if anyone's closest to it i'm the closest to it right now but we haven't decided that because this ambition can't be cancelled that's the problem once we've picked it, that is it. We are in it for life. And I want to see if anything else crops up first that makes us think, actually, we should probably go down that route. But we have to wait and see for that, ladies and gentlemen. We have to wait and see. So, something else that we were talking about last week. My Grand Vizier has just died. So something else that we were talking about last week is, 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 is approaching the council a little bit different than we have been approaching it previously in the past. So previously in the past, I would say, well, let's find who's the best person. But I think we need to start paying attention to the titles and that as well. Now, my traits do come into this as well a little bit because I am ambitious. So I do want the right people in the positions. But the Grand Vizier is your advisor on matters of diplomacy. The position is traditionally considered the highest on the council. Now, traditionally, historically, you would usually have a vizier or a grand advisor or anything like that. Your top advisor would usually be someone that you trust the most, someone that you like the most. Now, you might not always like them because you don't get on with them sometimes when they tell you something that you don't want to hear. But trust in this game needs to come from somewhere and the best way to establish trust is is like i would say so we don't have a court imam at the moment because this advisor is a, is your personal advisor on matters of faith i'm not a very faithful person so we're gonna stop using that right now marshall i think when this guy goes we're probably not going to have a marshal either but the grand vizier is my top advisor so it's definitely going to be someone that I actually like the most. So I think that's what we're now going to do. Whether or not with regards to, you know, whether they're very good at it or not, also does come into it a little bit. But I think I've been giving too much weight to that side of things. Now, if it comes down to it, like if I like someone, you know, 15 and I like someone else... 16 wow that was weird 
I think then I might also look at their traits as well and say, well, you know, but if there's if there's a if there's if the, if it's close enough, and I don't and no one particularly pulls themselves out, then I think that that's acceptable. That I would then say, well, who's going to be the best at the job as well? Because I am ambitious. If I was arbitrary, then I wouldn't really care. But because I'm ambitious, I do think that I would actually put some thought into that as well. So let's get into it and, and, and hopefully I'll be able to straighten the thought process out in my head as we're going along. But let's see. So one, not great. Three, seven, 16, we already know. Five, eight, yeah, see now. So 16 looks like it's going to be the highest right now. Out of pretty much everyone in my court. Yeah, so easy decision. He's not good at this. But he is someone that I like the most. So yeah, he's going to become my Grand Vizier. He's not great at it. And there is a high likelihood that he's going to sabotage relations with my lord. But... I think... That's what we're going to do right now. Because he was by far and away the furthest out in, in the lead of the race that I liked. There was no one even close to him. So... That makes sense. And yeah, when my marshal passes away, I don't think we're going to have a new marshal either. Because I am not militaristic in the least. I don't know anything about military. My dad knew a little bit about military. The cavalry leader, the desert expert. Now, oh, that's a point actually. Because I did say that my dad taught me that I needed to know a little bit. Yeah, actually, yeah, because my dad knew a lot about military. So I'm sure that he would have taught me that, you know, we, we did say this, didn't we? We did say that my dad did teach me a little something something about military okay so maybe i would have a marshal then because that's literally the minimum i can do doesn't mean that i'm going to go around building buildings doesn't mean i'm going to go around declaring wars doesn't mean that i'm going to invest in technology it doesn't mean that i'm going to do anything else uh, have a retinue anything like that I'm not going to go hunting. I'm not going to have a war focus. But maybe the least I can do is have a marshal. But. I think that that also needs to come down to who I like as well. Because. There's nothing in me that suggests I need to know I have the best man for the role in that job. Let's cross that bridge when we come to it. We don't need to cross that bridge right now. But one thing that did just happen. There has been a war declared on the Caliph. And it's a big one. He is going to lose. He has 7,000 troops. This guy has six, nearly 17. He is going to lose this war. So the Abbasids are going to lose even more more land. I don't know what it's for. A holy war for Maclan. So where is Macran? Ah, it's down here. Okay, so it's in one of his uh Yeah, okay, so it's in one of the uh the the vassals, okay. The tributaries or something like that. Okay. But he's going to lose that. I don't know how much you're bringing to the table. Yeah, nothing. Yeah, so they're going to lose that as well. So the Caliph's going to lose even more power and prestige as well. This is just getting sad for him at this point. Okay, so here's something. My son, Hussein, my heir, is uh, 
being targeted again for assassination. This time it's by a guy called Khalib who is heir to the Abbasid Empire. Apparently he doesn't like him so they're rivals as well. But my son is also backing it. So the first thing I can do is tell him to stop backing this plot. And I can also send my son into hiding. But I don't like him. Would I care? You know what, I am going to send him into hiding, because I think I would do that anyway. The heir, I would I would have to, you know, as much as I dislike him, I need to look after the heir as much as I can, can't I? And you're definitely not going to win the plot, I have no power over you, do I? So. Okay, well hopefully that will reduce the power of it a little bit, if he goes into hiding and my other son stops backing the plot, hopefully uh, I will no longer back Prince Khalib's dubious plot, so that's dropped the power right down to 26%. So hopefully should be all okay then. Right, my marshal has just died as well, so now that's something, that's the bridge we need to cross now. Um, uh, I'm a firm uh, foundation of the cosmos. I've already studied the stars, so that's fine, right? So my marshal has now died. So yeah, this is the bridge that we now need to cross. So the best marshal, but I need to like you. No, no, I don't hate you. So that could be good. I like you, and you're the same. Yeah, okay. Okay. You can come in as the marshal. And yeah, I'll leave you on organising the army for the time being. Yeah, I don't really care about that. That's fine. So organising the army and train troops, I think are pretty much much of a muchness for, for a marshal's basic role isn't it you know like I mean his basic role is to train the troops his basic role is to look after the army so yeah I think that that's okay so yeah so there we go so I got an all right marshal he wasn't the best because there was someone who was clearly much better but I didn't like him I didn't like the next one either so we went for the ones that yeah I, I think that that makes sense I, I would have a marshal because my dad taught me about the importance of looking after yourself, being able to defend yourself, the military, things like that. He taught me the importance of that. But I don't necessarily have an inkling towards it, so I'm not going to do anything more than just say, okay, well, let's hire someone who can do it and is decent at it. I think, I think that that makes sense. Well, we got an update on the Aztecs. News from across the sea. Rumours have reached Europe of a titanic struggle taking place across the Great Sea in the homeland of the Aztecs. The Aztecs themselves rarely discuss it with outsiders, but it appears they have been locked in a deadly war for some time with the Tahuanitis Tinsuyu. I tried to pronounce these words, guys. See, I do try. Uh, a great empire from the mountains and jungles far to the south of Tenochtitlan. They are ruled by the Sapa Inca, so the Incan, uh, the Incas are on the map as well, who is allegedly the direct descendant of some kind of sun god. If the stories are to be believed, the warriors of the Inca are armed with mysterious thunder sticks, capable of felling a man from great distance. So they have guns. The Inca have guns. Okay. So I'm guessing they would have got them from China going the other way? So, they've, so the Chinese have gone east instead of west. Okay. Um, 
The Aztec have only recently been able to halt their advance in large part thanks to their mounted warriors riding horses imported from Europe. Yep, yeah, very true. It was very good. Thundersticks, sun gods. I have no time for this nonsense. We're very blasé about a, part, a big struggle. Let's take a look to see what is going on with the Aztecs. They have taken over all of England. Now, oh no, Kent still exists. So they haven't quite taken over all of England. You've still got Kent. Pretty much all of Wales have started to move into Ireland as well. So yeah, the British Isles is pretty much going to be Aztec soon. That's, uh, that's looking more and more likely. Don't know if they're going to start pushing into Europe or not at any point. Maybe they're just trying to consolidate their power. On, in the British Isles before they start pushing down into Europe but yeah the Inca the Inca are uh, around as well as the Aztecs so lots going on to the west it seems and here we go am I gonna make all of my children rivals of me what else have we got diligent patient yeah I can't do either of those can I <laughs> so all of my children are going to hate me. Here we go. That is all of my children. Now my rivals. None of my children. Oh dear. But. You know. It makes sense. I am ambitious. I would want great things for my children. But now they all hate me. That is all my children as my rivals. Ouch. Right, well we can acquire some ingredients. What shall we do this time? I am a learned man, so perhaps I know about things in the hills. Yeah, let's go do that, because that doesn't cost me any money that way. And I can write a theorem paper. Okay, I will make a decent effort. I'll make an extraordinary effort. Yeah, still ambitious, right? And I'm not uninspired or anything like that, am I? Nope. Nope, I think I would... I think I would make an extraordinary effort, wouldn't I? Yep. So there we go. I'm not stressed, though. I'm just focusing on a theorem paper right now. So that is fine. So we're not... Uh, we're not getting any terrible traits going in right now. Still trying to finish writing this book, though. Once I know how to finish this book, then we move from a scholarship focus and then maybe I'll take a look at the ambitions as well. But nothing's come up that would suggest I'd go in one way or another right now, which is annoying. Right, what's going on here? I know I'm not the best warrior in the realm, but I so wish I was. There are men who appear to be better than me and I wish I was like them. I can insult one of them. I can befriend one of them. Or I can attempt to emulate them. Okay, do I like you? Not that much, but I'm not... I don't hate you. I still think that's in the meh region. Or I can gain one martial by attempting to emulate them. My martial skill isn't bad. I don't think I'd insult him because I don't hate him. Yeah, I don't hate him. I might try and befriend him because I'm very meh against him. So maybe I'd want to try and get to know him better so he can teach me more or I can attempt to try and emulate him myself it's definitely one of these two mm. what are you like you're dying yeah I don't know if I'd You're a drunkard. I, I'm not. I'm temperate. Yeah, I don't think I'd want to be your friend, but I'm not going to insult him, so I'm just going to do that. Let's see if I got stressed. I didn't. 
but I did gain one marshal. Okay, not too bad. Here we go, here's something. Why couldn't this crop up earlier? I've noticed that young Saman seems to carry a lot of anger around. She should learn temperance, so I can teach her temperance. I shall resist the temptation to interfere. So she loses the trait brooding, but gains the trait wrath. But I am temperate. So there is a chance that she will become temperate. She didn't, no. She just, she's wrathful. So, okay. Uh, Mayor Abdul feels I risk too much with escapades and tried to persuade me to stop risking my life. But I, 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 I'm, am I brave? I am brave, yeah. Okay, fair enough. That makes sense. So, what a thrill. Fair enough. Uh, so, didn't he tell me that before? Maybe it's the same guy. Maybe it's a different guy. I don't know. But people keep telling me I need to chill out and stop being so brave, which is quite funny. Uh, we discover a plethora of plants, so there's been some stuff added to my treasury. Violet, mandrake, yarrow, nettles. Okay, quite a few ingredients. So if I need to brew a potion at all, I can brew a potion. I just don't really need to right now. I've just been named the Magus. Many years of my life have been spent dedicated to Hermetic Society, performing missions and tasks in the interests of the Order and its Magus. Today, all that effort has been rewarded as I have become the new Magus. My fellows now look to me for leadership and guidance. So I am the new Magus. That came around very quickly. I did not think I would be that high up, but apparently I am. Okay. Well, there you go. I am the new Magus. Only the second or the third? I think I'm the third one of my family to do this, right? But that does need some new important decisions that need to be made. So I'm not uninspired yet because I haven't finished writing that book. So I will hold a grand debate so my members can come and debate some stuff. We got a good giant catapult out of the last one for that. Uh, I'm pretty sure I can also write my magnum opus now, right? Uh, yep, I will write my magnum opus. I can do that. And I can also um, embrace a choose a hermetic art once I get some esoteric knowledge. 150, that should be pretty easy to get. Yeah, I'm gaining quite a lot. That shouldn't take that long to get to that level at all. But there you go. I am the new Magus. Let's uh, see what we're going to do about this magnum opus. Secluded at my writing desk, quill in hand, and plenty bottle, and plenty a bottle of ink nearby. I find myself staring down upon the blank parchment. The sheer scale of the task upon which I am about to embark dawns upon me. I need to record my knowledge, also hide it from those who are unworthy. So I'm going to create a new cipher disk, I imagine, in in that regard. But why does it take so much longer to write a book? than it does write in a magnum opus in this game. That's very weird. So I am gonna start writing my magnum opus. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that I'm gonna come up with a new cipher disc for, for my magnum opus, which means I'll have two cipher discs, which means I might be able to give one away uh, as a dowry or something like that at some point. Okay, so that's my um, theorem paper. The guests have started arriving. It's time for the grand debate to begin. So what are we going to be moving towards? Uh, you've endorsed it, that's fine. During a late conversation with a fellow member of the Hermetic Society, I find myself discussing the power of one's phrasing. When I jokingly suggest that I should attempt to deliver my arguments in verse, Cardinal Gautier, to my surprise, nods appreciatively. Do not underestimate the power of a good rhyme, he says. He is very, very true. That is very true. If the glove doesn't fit, you must acquit. That's a good one. Red sky in the morning, shepherd's warning. Red sky at night, shepherd's delight. People do like a rhyme. It's very easy. Perhaps it is exactly what my theme needs. So I gain the trait poet. That's good. 
Um, you're gonna like me anyway, Cardinal Gutier. Uh, nonsense, I will focus on facts, not embellishments. Um, anything in me, I'm temperate and humble, so I'm likely to take advice. Yeah. Yeah, I'm likely to take the advice, and I actually like him. Well, I'm meh about him, but... Yeah. So, there you go. I am now a poet as well. There you go. My diplomacy still skill sucks. So that's really not my area of expertise. But I'm a poet. There you are. But one thing I did just notice while I was talking. Uh, we seem to be at war with the Aztecs. Did we join the war? So they're fighting the Byzantines. The Aztec invasion of Greece. Oh, holy crap. They are planning on getting close. Why did we join this war? Is it a faction? War? Is it because... Why are we... I don't know. Maybe it was like a... Uh... You know, um, uh, exp uh, aggressive expansion war. Maybe, maybe that's where it came from. But I'm not, I'm not sure why we would be in the war otherwise. Oh wait, there he was. Where are you? There. Yeah, he has no land there in Greece. Are we allied to the boys and toys? You're in a lot of wars, my man, and you do not have the strength for this. You are gonna get your ass handed to you. We are not. Yeah, we are not good on troop power at the moment. Muslim defense pact against the Aztec Empire. Yeah, so that's why. So it was aggressive expansion. We got sucked in that way. But this is not good for you. You're going to get your ass handed to you even more, my man. But wow, so the Aztecs are going for Greece. So they're going to be on our doorstep. So we're going to have the Aztecs literally a couple of counties away from us. And the Mongols are getting a little bit closer. They're making a lot of progress here in the north. So they might swing down through the Caucasus. Yeah, it's a... Uh, it's getting a little bit ropey around this part of the world. And once again, we have been declared the winner of the Grand Debate, showing all that no one is as knowledgeable as me. I thought I was uh, humble. Yeah, I'm humble. I shouldn't be saying things like that. But uh, yeah, there you go. We won the grand debate. We're going to get a crap load of stuff from that. That's going to be enough esoteric knowledge to adopt a hermetic art as well. And also, we got the trait of the poet out of it as well, which was nice. So I'm quite happy about that. But I'm pretty sure we can now choose a hermetic art yes what do we want to go towards so i'm i'm learned and i'm now a poet as well so i'm i'm probably yeah oh no wait i'm already a scholar so i don't need to choose a hermetic art okay I'm already a scholar. Okay, so I don't need to choose a hermetic art. Okay. Well, that's fine then. We don't. There's nothing that we really need to do right now. Uh, my son is still in hiding, isn't he? He is not looking great right now. <laughs> um, his health isn't awesome. But he's still in hiding because the plot is still there. 
Now, I've asked these two to leave the plot again. But yeah, it doesn't seem to... Uh, they don't seem to have agreed to it yet or not. So he still needs to be in hiding for the time being. But um, I'm not sure. Uh, and the grand debate comes to an end. Everyone gets plus five opinion of me. That's good. Uh, yep, so there we go. I've I've created a new cipher. Uh, theurgy, astrology, alchemy. Um, State-of-the-art lab. It's got to be alchemy then, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's got to be alchemy. Uh, you're not going to back the plot anymore. That's good. And you're not going to back the plot anymore. So that should have brought the plot power down, right? So you might be able to come back out of hiding now. Maybe. But I don't like you, so maybe I don't want you around anyway. Yeah, you know what? I'm happy for you to not be around. That's fine. Whoa, I knew there was a huge bear somewhere near the caves in Damask. And a courtier of mine had insisted to come along when my men and I were, were hunting for the bear. So we're going to go and hunt a bear, right? I don't mind this person. That's fine. Enough of your nagging. You can come along. Uh, there is no way you'll join us. No, okay. He can come. I don't. I, I like him. I like him enough. Yeah, he can come. The beast was huge, bigger than any bear I had ever seen. I fought him bravely, but only managed to slay him after he wounded several of my men. I could not save everyone. While well, Ikasin gains the trait wounded, but I managed to save Wally Issa. Okay, that doesn't seem like something I should be able to choose. That should be up to fate. And when it's up to fate, you know what we do. We flip a coin. So I'm guessing that if I didn't like this guy, then I wouldn't even try to save him, I'm supposing. But because I do like him, I'm trying... I'm trying to save him. But whether I did or not is all dependent on fate. So here we go. Heads, I could not save everyone. Tails, I managed to save him. Tails, I managed to save him. I managed to save Wally Issa. Okay, so his opinion goes up by 10 because he approves of my bravery. Okay, well, there you go. That's a li nice little weird event that we've uh, we've never seen before. So I killed a bear and saved some random guy. So there we go. Oh, this guy's dead. You were... Yeah, you died. You died in my dungeon? Yes, you did. But that's fine. You bloody deserve to. You tried to kill me. You tried to kill me in my bedroom. So, you are now dead. Which means that your son, I'm guessing, and you don't mind me. You don't mind me, and I don't mind you. So, that works a hell of a lot better for me. So, welcome to your new role. You're not important at all, so you don't expect anything right now because you're just a child. But yeah, that guy died because he tried to kill me. So there you go. Okay, my daughter has come of age. She finished her education in the ways of faith and learning. I notice with pride that she has attained nothing less than a masterful level of knowledge. She is a mastermind theologian. She does not like me though and I don't particularly like her. Proud, wrathful, lustful, ambitious, and shrewd. Did, did pretty well educate, you know? It just turns out that none of us like each other, and you are gonna marry the Shah and Shah of the Seljuk Empire. Uh, yeah, that's a good marriage for you. Well done, uh, that's, that's impressive. So, we are going to get you married. I still like you. Yep, we'll make that happen. So there we go. So you are marrying the Shah and Shah. I don't know how he can call himself Shah and Shah. He's not that powerful. But 
He's got a lot of money come back in again now. I still think we could take him if we needed to. I could hire some mercenaries. I still think we could take him if we needed to. But we shouldn't have to because he likes me, I like him. I don't think he's going to be declaring war on me anytime soon, so it should be fine. How are things over here with my nephew as well? Uh, do you still like me? Yeah, everything's still okay here. Oh, I might be able to give you a cipher disc because I didn't give you... I couldn't give him a gift because I did not have the money for that. But if we now have two cipher discs... No, we've only got one. I haven't made it yet. Okay, okay. I haven't made the cipher disc yet, so I can't give that to you. But when we do, I might give it to you. Uh, Caliph Suleiman II claims to have proof that I have slandered him. He promises to keep this to himself if I promise to stay out of all factions. Uh, well, I haven't slandered you, but I do like you, so I'm not going to... I'm not going to join a faction anyway, because I like you, so... But that's just going to make my opinion of him go down a little bit, isn't it? Uh... No, apparently not. Apparently it's fine. Okay, uh, you... Yeah, I, I already said that that was fine. So, yeah, I already said that's okay. So, I'm assuming that that's done now, right? Yeah, yeah. So, you're now married to my daughter. That's fine. And... Ooh, that's high enough for a... Alliance. But do I want that? Who are you at war with? Yeah, I think... Maybe I'll wait till you're out of these wars. And then... Maybe offer you the alliance. But I don't want to get sucked in to your wars right now. So I think I'll wait for that until... Until we uh, look to see if we can get an alliance sorted or not. See, and there you go. I finished my magnum opus. I didn't create a new cipher disc though, which is a little bit annoying. I was hoping that I was going to create a new cipher disc so I could give that old one away to someone, but apparently not. Apparently, the old cipher discs work just well with this one, so it's fine. But yeah, so I made my magnum opus before, way before, I, I actually managed to just write a normal book. Which is weird, because so the book takes longer than my magnum opus. And finishing the book leaves me uninspired, absolutely shattered to write and to do, to do anything else, anything, any other creative pursuits for like, what, a decade? 20 years something like that but my magnum opus apparently doesn't do anything apparently it doesn't even touch the sides it's fine you know it's like yeah i can write my magnum opus and be like yeah whatever easy no problem <laughs> who's the man but yet writing a book just a normal book takes it out of me so much that i cannot possibly do anything else for the next 15 years crazy but yeah I've written my magnum opus and it is on the a, a fact of turning metal into gold. So, there we go. Uh, the magnum opus on transmutative alchemy has been added to my treasury. Let's see how good that is. The magnum opus on transmutative alchemy. So I can equip that, but does that... that unequips the Bedouin language. Okay, so the Bedouin language, quality three, that gives me general opinion and monthly prestige. Okay, and the... Check. Can I have both of them? Oh, no, that takes this one out. Okay. So, yeah, we got a lot of magnum opuses now. So now it's... Well, I want, I want my one because, obviously, I wrote that one. So that's fine. So that's quality four. Martial plus one, stewardship plus two, learning plus one. This masterwork magnum opus contains many secrets on transmutative alchemy. It has been encrypted with an elaborate sci-fi allowing only that. Yeah. So I want that one because I created that one. Magnum opus on stellar astrology. Martial intrigue and learning. 
or the Bedouin language, which is just general opinion. I think I want astrology, don't I? That seems more in line with me, because I've studied the stars, which means that we no longer have the Bedouin language. Yeah, so we'll keep that out for now. I want my magnum opus for sure, and we'll have the magnum opus on astrology. Which means that I might be able to give this one away if I so choose. Well, as we didn't create a new cipher disc, we've only got the one. Because I've got the secret history of the Bedouin as well, haven't I? Yeah. I should give that away. And your family, aren't you? Yeah. I think I'm going to do that. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Because it's going to stay in the family that way anyway. That's going to get his opinion up of me. He's less likely to come and attack me for my land down here. Because family doesn't always necessarily mean anything in this game. Anyone can just go nuts on anyone for any reason at any time. So the fact that I have him like me might be a very good idea. So yeah, I'm happy with that. We're not using it now anyway. We probably won't be using it at any point. I have accepted your gracious gift. What a splendid object. There we go. He loves me now. Absolutely loves me. So I could form an alliance with him, but I don't... I don't like him that much. But I'm pretty sure we have... Do we have a non-aggression pack? I don't think we do have a non-aggression pack, actually, do we? Uh... No, we don't have a non-aggression pact, which means that he could attack me. So maybe we could form an alliance? Well, I don't like him that much. That would be a powerful alliance to have, wouldn't it? Let's keep an eye on that. Let's see if my opinion goes up of him at all at any point in the future. But, yeah, I mean, we weren't using that anyway. So, I couldn't afford to give him the non-aggression pact between us has been dissolved as I no longer have marriage ties. Okay. I'm pretty sure I can do without you anyway. That's fine. Um, yeah, we weren't using it anyway. We're probably not going to be using it again, I imagine. Because we have the secret history of the Bedouin anyway. So, yeah. I'm happy with that decision. Oh. Yeah, this doesn't look like it's a particularly nice... Uh... Right, he's been approved my regent. That's because I'm in hiding. So I need to come out of hiding, I'm guessing. Emir Najib is with the Horus in paradise at age 45. He was murdered on the orders of Sheikh Azam of Daria. Known to be a respected scholar, Najib spent most of his days studying in his library, rarely leaving his palace. Emir Hussein II, being both thrifty and frugal, the realm will surely prosper under his rule. Long live Emir Hussein II. There you are. I thought it was going to come a lot, a lot earlier than this, to be honest with you. I'm surprised we got to the age of 45, but it is a shame. It is a shame. Emir Najib was a good man. Maybe not the most exciting of men. Maybe not the most 
interesting of characters, but our realm grew the biggest under Emin Ajib that it has ever done before. He doubled the size of our realm. He made it huge. Granted, it wasn't actually him doing anything. The Caliph just gave him the land. But had Emin Ajib not been such a good man and had the Caliph not loved him so, then perhaps he never would have given him that realm. So we need to remember that. And we've got some things that we need to do with Emir Hussein now. What is he going to do about Sheikh Azam? Is he going to do anything about that? Because he didn't like his dad. But we need to see whether he likes Najam, uh, Azam or not more. We need to check that out. So there's going to be some decisions going forward. Moving in to next time, ladies and gentlemen. I want to thank you for joining me today. I certainly hope that you join me again next time. But until then, I bid you all adieu, a good day, and a massive GG to you all. You like this? Well, make sure you like, subscribe, and check out another video on our channel. Witch Tea Entertainment.